Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome this morning to Pilgrim Rest Baptist Church right here at 1105 East Main Street in the city of Benton Harbor, Michigan. I'm excited because it's Sunday. Even though we are virtual, even though we're not coming in person, I'm glad that we have the means that we'll be able to reach you in your homes. Some of you are at work and you were already upset because we were open and everybody was enjoying worship in person, but you can even be at work, you can be in a dorm, you can be across the country. It was amazing last week, someone told me that they were moving to Grand Rapids and they're gonna miss the church. No, you're not gonna miss the church because we're everywhere. I need you to help me today to encourage someone else to join this live broadcast. I need those that's watching on Facebook and YouTube, I want you to like, share, and comment. Like, share, and comment. And I also want to welcome all of those that's watching us right now, on listening to us rather, on the 105.3, what is it? 105.3 FM here in the city of Benton Harbor, Michigan. Listen, I'm going to pray in just a moment, and then we're going to go forward in our worship on uh, today. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for this privilege and this opportunity that you've given us to worship in a cyber uh, place. Thank you uh, for the means to go into various homes throughout uh, this city and this country. And some watching from everywhere, listening to us on the radio, thank you for the privilege that you've given us to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. I pray today, Father, that you will allow the word to go forth in a way that will be unrestricted, that it will meet every need on today. Thank you for the word, even before it's released. I pray even now, God, that you will bless us and you will keep us and you will lead us and you will guide us on today. In the name of Jesus, we pray and we say thank you. And everyone says Amen. Listen, I want you to do me a favor. Some of you are just now coming on. I want you to tag everyone you know. I want you to invite. I want you to share this. I really want to boost up our numbers today. We know that the radio, the number is unknown because so many people listen to us on the radio. But I want to make sure that today, Pilgrim Rest, that you are in fact engaged in worship on today. I need everybody uh, to do that, even right now, even myself. I am going to make sure that I'm sharing as well on today. Everybody is doing it, even right now. Pilgrim Rest Baptist Church uh, is, our, is, is our page. I see 15 of you already on right now. I see our, our, our social media uh, handler is tagging uh, members, come on, Annette Hill. Everybody is in the comments right now. Everybody is saying good morning. Everybody is engaging. There's no one that's just sitting and spectating. Good morning to you, uh, Rashonda. Good morning to you, Annette Hill. Good morning to you, Lorraine Glenn. Good morning, Jodine. Come on, good morning, Kenya. Come on, I need more of you, more of you. Come on, drop in the comments right now. Let us know that you are accounted for on this day. Come on, let's get it, let's get it. Tamika, good to see you uh, on today. Uh, Latana, uh, Britt, good morning to you. I want you to tag. I want to see some tags in the comments. Make sure that you are uh, watching. Uh, Lorraine Green, a good morning again. Uh, come on, uh, Rashonda, thank you so much. Uh, for coming on. Tag your children. Wake them up. Wake them up. Text them. Tell them to get on. We're having church on today. Uh, Kim Ruffin, good to see you. Uh, she's uh, in person with us. You'll hear more about that uh, in just a moment. Come on. I need more of you. Everyone is sharing. Listen, that is the same as sharing the gospel when you share the broadcast so that someone uh, can hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. All right? So listen, today this is what I want you to do. Here's a quick announcement just so you can know, and, and I want you all to put in the comment section. Um, 
Thank you, Rashonda. She says she already tapped them. That's right. Come on, get your kids involved, engaged in worship. Today is the first Sunday of October. Today is the first Sunday of October, and immediately after this broadcast, right when we hit in, I want you all to prepare yourselves to come to the church, not just those on Facebook, but even those that listen to the radio. If you're a visitor, if you're listening to us, you're not even a member of the church, you can come as well. At 1230, we're doing communion here. It's going to be drive style, drive through style, that we're going to be uh, giving out communion. And we're gonna, that means we're tasting the body of Jesus. Uh, that's what that means. I teach that, that we're tasting the body. It's an opportunity for us to taste the blood and taste uh, the body uh, that was literally broken on Calvary's cross. So I want you to come to the church at 1230. Right when, after you take communion, you'll be able then uh, to pay your tithes and your offerings, give your gifts uh, unto the Lord. And then immediately after that, uh, our uh, uh, kitchen ministry, culinary ministry, they're going to be feeding every member and visitor uh, today. Today is normally the Sunday where we will be downtown and we will be feeding the 500. Remember, Jesus fed 5,000. I believe that if Jesus can feed 5,000, at least we can do is 500. And we fed 500 on last year at this time, fish. You remember we had whiting and catfish and perch, uh, uh, fish and bread for people uh, downtown. We're not doing that today, but we are going to feed you on today. All you have to do is just drive through and you don't have to get out of your car for communion you don't have to get out of your car for your tithes and offering and you do not have to get out of your car to even receive your dinner go home they said pastor uh we have to feed we have to feed them uh what are we gonna have them uh, uh cold to drink and i said because i heard that the old pastor said let them go home and get something to drink you will get nothing to drink but it's gonna be a bomb uh, meal uh, on today. I see more of you coming on. Come on, everybody. Good to see our deacon, Deacon James Moore. Uh, it's on as well. Even those that's listening to the radio, welcome uh, on today. Let's get ready for worship. We're getting ready to go to uh, a song of, of praise on today, and then we'll be back. Don't y'all go nowhere. Let's go. They told me that you guys have been studying the tabernacle. You've been talking about where God resides. Well, guess what? Now, he resides right here, provided that you make room for him. So just right here, can you lift up your hands and begin to make room for your father? Lord, I promise to make room for you, God. Oh, God, yeah. I find space for what I treasure. And I make time for what I want. I choose my priorities and Jesus you're my number one so I will make room for you I will prepare for two so you you don't
Instagram time you get. I know that power is coming on tonight, but oh, so you can move and oh, I will make room. Come on, one more time. Oh, my friends, Jesus, you can move that on. My family, God, you can move that on. Whatever's in your way, you can move that on. Whatever takes your place, you can move that on. I just thought that somebody would catch on and just begin to make room for God. Who cares about how I look right now? I'm making room for him right here. I'm making room for him right here. I need you to go ahead and forget about everything else and just make sure that you're making room for God right now. space for what I treasure and I make time for what I want I choose my priorities and here's the best line and Jesus you're my today that whatever is in our way that we pray that it will be moved out the way whatever it is whatever the distractions are you can move it over make room today make time for God uh, on uh, today I'm thankful for each of you y'all the energy in the comments are short of amazing good to see Mother Watson in the comments, my chief elder, uh, Jackie Clemens, uh, is in the comments. I see our youth director, Cynthia uh, Craig. I see our financial uh, uh, leader, um, uh, Charmaine Davis. All of our leaders are in place, uh, our deacons and, and so forth. Uh, somebody call and wake up Steve uh, and tell him to get, get on today. Amen. Uh, because... It's time for the word. Listen, one of the things that I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for, and I just want to throw this out there, and I want you all to go crazy in the comment section. Uh, our roof at our Christian Education Center is finally completed. Uh, it's done, both sides. Uh, it's done. Uh, good to see my old friend from uh, Muncie, Indiana, Charlotte Buchanan. She's in the comments today. We thought the roof was only going to cost $10,000. End up running us about fifteen thousand dollars, and uh, tomorrow we make the last payment of six hundred dollars, and we are done with the roof. Come on, give God praise uh, even now. Uh, Deacon Clement, my my chairman of my deacon board, just said hello, and he loves uh, Pilgrim Rest Baptist Church. Thank everyone that's given to our roof uh, today. So I need y'all to make sure you pay the tithe so we can stay above. Uh, budget uh, with that because it already cost us uh, uh, a little bit more than we thought it was going to be 10000 It ended up costing us 15000 but it is done.
thank you, Rashonda, all of you, uh, for your gifts in making it happen. Amen. Come on, I need more of you in the comment section. Just telling the Lord, thank you. Uh, so now, here's the good news, everybody. Every single building uh, that we have uh, is almost, we're 90% complete that every property we have is in fact, listen to this, making its own money. Across the street, the state uh, does the lease for that. Uh, they just added more money to our monthly. Uh, Jakeway is still being leased to another church. This building is strictly tithes and offering, and we're getting ready to continue working uh, at our Christian Education Center that's going to be uh, next year our child care facility here in the city of Benton Harbor, Michigan. Give God praise for that. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen, it's time for the word on today. Uh, we are a word-driven church. That's how we live. That's how we thrive. Even when a musician don't show up, we're still excited because the word of God is going to go forth. I want you all to, to really get involved uh, in the service. I, I've invited someone uh, to preach today, all right? Um, I, I know Sister Watson not upset. She was tired of hearing me anyway. Uh, but I invited someone. Now, he's going to look young, you all, but I want you all to know something. That when I was a little kid uh, at my home church, St. John Baptist Church, 2421 South Hannah Street, Fort Wayne, Indiana, 46806. I was a little kid in Sunday school, and he, he looks young, but I want to tell y'all, he was my Sunday school teacher. I was impressed by him, and he don't even know this as a boy, because he was very young then, and I remember him doing even his first trial sermon and sitting in the pulpit, and those were some years ago. We come from a strong niche uh, church uh, community, very traditional uh, church, but we learn uh, so much even in Sunday school and in those days everybody went to Sunday school you couldn't stay at home and, and not go to Sunday school and my aunts were Sunday school teachers and, and and they wasn't teachers like you would think it was just really babysitting just just uh, all right your turn to read and and, uh, and so forth and we had the Sunday school review and the kids had to come up and give their lesson. That's one thing I've loved about Pilgrim Rest. When I first uh, uh, approached this building my very first time, uh, I remember it was about 75 to 100 people in Sunday school classes downstairs and upstairs and so much uh, is going on. So I'm excited about that. But what I'm excited about mostly about his preaching is that he is strong on doctrine. This uh, month we are doing a series entitled Sound Doctrine, knowing what we believe and why we believe it. You will be amazed how many people are in church and they don't know what they believe. They just at church and they just go here. But I want us to be sound in our doctrine and sound in what we believe. Do we just believe it because somebody said it? Or do we believe it because the word says it? I'm gonna be dealing with all kind of stuff even on Wednesday night. I'm gonna be dealing with prophets. I'm gonna be dealing with speaking in tongues. I'm gonna be dealing with women preachers. I'm gonna be just dealing with controversial issues that we talk about and argue about in the beauty shops and barbershops, but we really don't have a biblical foundation on why we support this or that. So Pilgrim Rest, I want you to welcome, I want you to drop it in the comment section right now. I want you to welcome my friend and my brother, my Sunday school teacher, yes, uh, from Fort Wayne, Indiana. He pastors a great church, the New Life uh, Church there in Fort Wayne, Pastor Jimmy Ruffin. Let's receive him at this time. This is a day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. I'm so grateful and thankful for my brother, Pastor Carlton Lynch, for inviting me here today to share with you the word of the living God. I want to thank my wife for traveling with me from Fort Wayne uh, to Benton Harbor, Michigan, to be a part of this virtual worship experience. Let's open up with prayer. Father God, we pray that your spirit will speak to our hearts and minds. Speak, Lord Jesus. Your people 
are listening. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. I want to turn to 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3 and 4, as our primary text for our preaching points this morning. The Word of God reads as follows. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine and will turn away their ears from the truth and will turn aside to myths. When you're driving your car and listening to a radio station, you'll get the clearest signal when you're closest to the tower. It's easy to hear the station's music because you're near the source. But if you're driving out of town and going away from the tower, the radio signal gets weaker and starts breaking up. When you stop hearing that favorite station of yours, you will start picking up radio signals from other stations. That's what happens in the spiritual realm. When we are doctrinally close to God, we are able to clearly hear God. But if we start drifting away from our tower, or if we're deliberately running away from God, the signal gets weaker. And, and, and it becomes harder to hear the voice of God. It's at that point, beloved, that we become susceptible to hearing voices that are contrary to sound doctrine. This morning, I want to tag this text with a question. How strong is your signal? How strong is your signal? Let me give you five towers of truth uh, in order to maintain a strong signal of sound doctrine in the life of of the Christian. Paul in our text warns his, his protege, this young minister of the gospel, Timothy, this teacher of the word of God at the church at Ephesus. He, he encourages him by saying in 2 Timothy 4, 3 and 4, in the first three verses, the first two verses, he gives what is called uh, the charge to the preaching ministry. He, he solemnly declared and charged young Timothy to preach the word and to be ready in season and out of season. And then he tells them in verse 3 and 4 why he must be faithful to discharge his duty as a pastor teacher of the apostolic teaching of the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, for the time will come, and may I just add, it has come. The time when, will come when they will not endure sound doctrine and will turn away their ears from the truth and turn aside to myths. The first tower of truth is this, that sound doctrine requires faithful leadership. Yes, yes, sound doctrine requires faithful leadership. So the question arises, what exactly is sound doctrine? Uh, a sound doctrine means teaching. Sound teaching or sound doctrine in the Christian faith, listen to me, is accurate biblical teaching. That's what it is. It's accurate biblical teaching. It's, it's right teaching because right teaching affects right living. And so doctrine can be can be defined as the core beliefs, the, the essence that make up the Christian faith. And the word sound comes from the Greek word for hygiene. It means basically to be healthy, to be whole, to be sound. You went to a dentist, and the first piece of person you see at the dentist is not the dentist, it's the hygienist. And the hygienist, she takes you in a chair, or he, and they begin to clean your teeth. They give you x-rays to see how sound your teeth are, <laughs> to see how healthy your teeth are, to see how whole your teeth are. And when they find out that your teeth is sound and whole, then the dentist comes in and make his final examination and send you off with a beautiful smile. Beloved, that's what the church should do. 
for believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. Send us off with a spiritual, beautiful smile of knowing what we believe and why we believe in it. Come on, somebody. It, it, it implies something that is reliable. Paul says to another son in the ministry, and Titus 2, 1, but as for you, speaking of Timothy, as for you, Timothy, teach what accords with sound doctrine. Teach what's in agreement with sound teaching. Teach what's, what's, what's in, in harmony with sound teaching. Men of God must be faithful to the teaching, to the accurate teaching of the Word of God. Yeah. Now, the New Testament lays out our role as overseers, as pastors, as bishops and teachers in the church in no uncertain terms. And 1 Timothy 4, 16, he says to those who teach the word of God, who discharge the truth every Sunday morning, he says, keep a close watch on yourself. Examine yourself and on the teaching, the doctrine. Persist in this, for by so doing, you will ensure salvation both for yourself and for those who hear you. Listen, beloved. Paul says in 1 Timothy 3.15, but if I am delayed, I write so that you may know how you ought to conduct yourself in the household of God, in the church of the living God, the pillar and foundation of the truth. Yeah. Beloved, we are to conduct ourselves in the context of worship with correct thinking about God that will produce correct worship toward God and that will produce right living in the world on behalf of God. See, God commands that his body, the church, be served spiritual food, food for the soul, seasoned with sound doctrine. A pastor teacher can be gifted in many ways, but he is only faithful if in all that he does, he preaches sound doctrine, correct doctrine, accurate doctrine, doctrine that is rooted in the revelation of God's word. Uh, uh, the second tower, the second tower of truth is, is sound doctrine assures salvation to the lost. It assures salvation uh, to the lost. There are many unsound teachings in the Christian community that are anti-sound doctrine. One Christian group teaches one must be baptized in Jesus' name only in order to be saved. That's not scripture. Another group promotes the baptism of the Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues as authentic salvation. That's not sound. That's not healthy doctrine. Not because I said it's not sound, because the scriptures reveals that it's not sound. The biblical evidence of salvation, listen, are not gifts of the Spirit, but the fruit of the Spirit. Come on, somebody. The, the biblical evidence of true, authentic salvation are not the gifts of the Spirit, because the devil can duplicate gifts, but he cannot duplicate and produce the fruit of the Spirit. Because the fruit of the Spirit goes to our character, not just our conduct. Paul teaches in Ephesians 2, 8, 9, by grace you have been saved through faith, and it is not of yourself. It is the gift of God, lest anyone should boast. Beloved, beloved, Jesus said in John 13, 35, that I give to you a new commandment. And he says, by this, not by our gifts, not by our abilities, not by our beauty, brains, and bronze, but he says, by this, all people will know that you are my disciples because you love one another. Amen. See, beloved, love is the true evidence of true salvation for the believer. Yeah. It is the fruit of the Spirit, not the gifts of the Spirit. Then there's the erroneous views on the gift of prophecy or prophesying, and I would say prophelying. Many people prophesy instead of truly biblically and scripturally prophesy. Yeah. 
prophecy in the Bible is twofold. You have what is called foretelling, and then you have what is called forthtelling. Foretelling is the revealing of future events. The Old Testament prophets like Isaiah, uh, Hobekah, Obadiah, they were foretellers. And then you have what is called forthtellers. These are, these are the prophets who revealed what God has already revealed in Scripture. They are proclaiming and preaching and teaching what God has already said, and what God has already said is rooted in Scripture. And 1 Corinthians 14, verse 3 and 5, Paul is teaching a correct view of spiritual gifts in the church. He begins at this carnal church of Corinth in 1 Corinthians 12, 13, 14, and 15. But he gets down to chapter 14, verse 3 and 5, and he says this, but he who prophesies, listen, speaks edification, exhortation, and comfort to men. He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself, but he who prophesies, listen, edifies the church. Paul says, I wish you all spoke with tongues, but even more that you prophesy, that you say what God has already said and apply that to the lives of God's people. For he who prophesies, Paul says, is greater than he who speaks with tongues, unless indeed he interprets that the church may receive edification. The goal of prophecy is not to build up the individual, in the church, but to build up the church. Prophecy focus on the collective building of the body, not the individual success of the person. Y'all ain't hearing me this morning. Come on, somebody. Prophesying in the context of the New Testament church is not primarily individual, but corporate. Paul defines and describes the prophetic as edification, exhortation, and consolation. Beloved, that sound teaching is rooted in the revelation of God's written word. Not in what one thinks, one feels, or one believes, but in what God has already said in Scripture. The third tower of truth is sound doctrine, listen, empowers the saved. Yes, it does. It empowers the saved. It enables the saved to do what? to live saved. Sound doctrine propels the people of God into a spiritual process of growth, of spiritual development, because they are building their lives on the core foundation of God's written word, that word which is rightly taught and rightly applied. Uh, Paul says to Timothy in 2 Timothy 2.15, he says, study to show yourself approved to God, a workman that need not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Now let me stop there. That rightly dividing, the ideal in the Greek language, is that you're to handle the word of God accurately. You're to handle the word of God correctly. I love this translation. You are to cut it straight. When you go to the word of God, you need to cut the word straight. You need to say what God said and then apply that to the lives of the people you're saying it to. Yes, Sound doctrine mobilizes the church and equips the believer to mature in his or her faith. Sound doctrine empowers Christians to a high impact lifestyle because we are rightly relating to God vertically, therefore we rightly relate to others horizontally. A right relationship with fellow believers means this in the context of the church, that we're serving one another. We're loving one another. We're forgiving one another. We're exhorting one another and motivating one another, stimulating one another to love and to good deeds. That's why the Bible says, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some is, as you see the day approaching approaching the day of judgment, the day of Christ's coming, so that you may what? S spur one another, motivate one another to love and to good deeds. That's what happens when you get sound doctrine. 
you are able to empower others with the empowerment God has given you. And then right relating to the world means evangelizing the lost. Matthew 28, the Great Commission, 19 and 20. Go, make disciples of all nationalities, teaching them and baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Listen, beloved, we are called to evangelize the lost. We are called to share the good news of Jesus Christ, his death, burial, and resurrection, and soon return, that men and women may see the condition of their hearts and repent and cry out for salvation. And that salvation is only in the name that is above every name, and that name is the Lord Jesus Christ. We are also empowered to defend our faith, to give a reason for the hope that lies within us. That's why we need sound doctrine. So, 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 so 1 Peter 3.15 says, give a reason for the hope that lies within you and do it with this kind of attitude, gentleness and respect. So instead of closing our curtains when the Jehovah Witnesses and the Mormons come to our doors, we open our doors, invite them in, and give a reason of the hope that lies within us with gentleness and respect. Why do we close the doors and the curtains? Because we don't know sound doctrine. We don't know how to correctly and clearly communicate the transforming gospel of Jesus Christ. You see, beloved, knowing sound doctrine empowers us to convert the unconverted, to give an answer to the skeptics and the critics, to give an answer to the haters and the doubters, and the power to fight for the faith against false teachings. And that false teaching is not only outside the church, but we got to contend with false teaching within the church. Yeah. It's truly amazing when you can see what can happen when Christians are taught sound doctrine. We can live rightly before God, and we can live, r relate rightly towards one another and to the world. And then fourthly, beloved, the fourth tower of truth that we need to stay close to so our signal will be strong when it comes to sound doctrine is that sound doctrine purifies the church. <laughs> it, it, it cleanses the church. Sound doctrine sets the fake from the real. <laughs> sound doctrine will separate the professor from the possessor. Come on, somebody. Look, preaching sound doctrine is important because it not only produces strong believers, it purifies the church from false ones. We got a lot of false brethren in the church. We got a lot of false preachers, false pastors, and false prognosticators of the gospel. Paul warns us in 1 Timothy 4.1, Now the Spirit expressly says that in the latter times some will depart from the faith. Do you hear that? What a sad commentary. That in the time in which we live, many are departing from the faith. By devoting themselves to this, deceitful spirits and doctrines or teachings of demons personal friend of mine abandoned the faith. We studied and graduated from Fort Wayne Baba College that ultimately became Taylor University. He was a pastoral ministries major, pastored a local church, and then fell away after decades of ministry in the church. He joined an African spirituality cult, and today he denies that Jesus is the Christ. He denies that Jesus is the son of the living God. John says in 1 John 2, 19, they went out from us, <laughs> but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that it might become plain and clear that they are all not of us. Everyone who professes Jesus is not really of Jesus. Everyone who says they're saved are really not saved. Everyone who acts religious and speak Christian needs are really not authentically born again. John wrote in 1 John 4, verses 1 through 3, Beloved, do not believe every spirit. Don't believe every perspective. Don't believe every attitude 
and, and outlook and viewpoint and mindset on life. He says, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. Listen to that. It didn't say the false prophets came from the world into the church. It says the false prophets grew up in the church and then went out into the world. Wow. Oh, beloved, there's a need for sound doctrine. And then he says here, he says, every spirit, listen to this. He says, by this you will know the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you heard was coming and now is already in the world. True converts, beloved, love God's word. False converts are repulsed by God's word. When books of the Bible by pastor teachers are handled accurately and correctly and unpacked, and the sound teachings or instructions contained in them are laid bare for all to see. A decision will be made by those who hear the truth. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of Christ. That's doctrinal. Their hearts will either turn away from the truth or they will turn towards the truth or away from the truth. This is a vital point of the preacher's duty, the pastor's duty, and the ministry of the word. And doing so, he is participating in Christ building up of his body. Yeah. The fifth tower of truth, and the last one, is sound doctrine <laughs> impacts the future. Yeah. Oh, I love that one. Sound, sound doctrine will impact the future of the church. Listen, we have a charge to keep in a God to glorify. By doing what? By passing down the faith once delivered to the saints, to the next generation. Yes. To pass down correct teaching about who God is, what man is, who Jesus is, what is the church, what is life after death, how does how does our view of God differ from Islam, differ from Baha'i faith, differ from Mormons and Jehovah's Witnesses, giving them a correct view of biblical theology so that they can go to scripture and prove by the word of God what God has already said about himself. Sound doctrine impacts the future because it impacts our young people in such a way that they won't run to those, those identity cults African spirituality, the five percenters, Islam. Uh, they, they, they won't run to groups that deny the faith. Hebrew Israelites, African Hebrew Israelites. They'll stay within the confines of the church that they were nurtured and grew up in. And so many of our young people are nurtured and grew up in the church and they get out of the church and stay away from the church because they don't know what they believe or why they believe, and then a false teacher come around their path and they buy hook, line, and sinker. Wow. Beloved, now before you imagine, preaching sound doctrine is a sort of boring academic forum in the church each week. Remind yourself of what sound doctrine is. It is reliable and accurate biblical teaching. Preaching sound doctrine helps us from having a shipwreck faith. It, it may appear boring and simple, but it's dynamic and transformative. When sound doctrine was taught in the early church, it caused a spiritual explosion in the church community. In Acts chapter 2, 40 and 41, and with many words, he bore witness and continued to exhort them, saying, save yourselves from this crooked generation. So those who received that word, the Bible says they were baptized. <laughs> and there were added that day to the church 3,000 souls. Yes, if our present generation of pastor teachers will preach sound doctrine 
and not sound bites and declare the unadulterated word of God. The church can and will impact the decline and deliverance of millennials and Generation Z from exiting the true faith only to embrace a false imitation. Paul revealed to Timothy in the context of gathering for worship that we should know how to conduct ourselves in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar, the foundation of the truth. We are defenders of the faith. And we who defend the faith must clearly communicate that faith in such a re relevant way that it transforms the one we're speaking to. How strong is your signal? Let's pray. Father, what we know not, teach us. What we have not, give us. What we are not, make us. In the name of Jesus, our Redeemer, Ruler, and Reigning King. In His name we say, Amen. Wow, thank God again for the word of the Lord. Listen, I need everyone that was blessed by this rich word. I was blessed. I, I took notes today because it was sound. Amen. And that's the type of church that we want to have. We want to be a church that's not moved by, I like what he said, sound bites. And in many occasions, that's what moves churches that's what fills buildings and and all of that but we want to be a church that is doctrinally sound that we know exactly why we believe what we believe and we're not ashamed to tell it and i want you all to and i've seen the comments today um i've I seen uh, rashonda you know i've seen you i've seen uh, lucy brown i've seen many of you in the comments you know, and even those on YouTube uh, really engaged in the worship. And I know um, uh, those that's listening to uh, uh, on the 105.3 was blessed because, believe it or not, uh, we may have an old school church, you know, at times, and ain't nothing wrong with hooping and hollering, but, but, but one thing they love is the Word of God. Amen. And I honor uh, each of our members for that. Listen. There may be somebody that's listening that's out of the arc of safety. You have not committed um, your life. You have not surrendered your life to God. I, I'm excited because this uh, past uh, month, uh, I believe in September, we baptized 33 people uh, on the beach. We got four more to baptize young 16 and 17-year-olds. Uh, that have come to Christ just a week or so ago, going through their classes now. And I'm excited because I believe that there's still room. I know there's still room for, for you. And, and so I want to I wanna extend this opportunity for you to give your life to Jesus on today. And I don't care where you are in life, uh, the Lord will save you. You can't be so low that he won't come and reach and pick you up. So high, he can't bring you down. So far out that he can't bring you and draw you in to him. I believe the word of the Lord. I was saved uh, in August of 1986. And it has not been, uh, I have not had a perfect life, but I've had a saved life, a safe life, a secure life. And I believe that by faith that God will still save even right now to the utmost. Romans chapter 10 verse 9 says this, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in thy heart that God raised his son Jesus from the dead, the Bible says thou shalt be saved. And that's what he was talking about today, dealing with sound doctrine, because people will have you believe that you got to run around seven times, speak in tongues, fall out, get oil slain on you, thrown on you, and all of that. And, and, and I don't have no problem with, 
with any of that if that's what you choose to do, but that is not a basis for salvation. Salvation has to do with mouth confession and a belief that only you and God knows because it's in your heart. And so the Bible says that if you believe in your heart and you confess it with your mouth, the Bible says thou shalt be saved. Believe what? Hey, you got to accept the fact that you sin. And that's not hard because Romans 3 and 23 declares that all of us have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. B, you believe. You believe what? That, that we needed somebody to come down and redeem mankind because of our sins, because of our shortcomings. And there was a voice that hollered behind the curtain and said, hey, prepare me a body, I'll go down, and I'll redeem mankind. And that was Jesus. He came down through 42 generations, stopped off a little town called Bethlehem, wrapped in swaddling clothes, healed the sick, raised the dead, gave sight to the blind, and caused the lame to walk and the dumb to talk. On a Friday, went to a cross and died for you and me. You believe that? And you confess the fact that he's no longer dead, but he lives. Early Sunday morning, he rose from the dead. And if you confess that and you believe that, I need you to drop it in that comment section right now. Call our church, 269-925-3411. 269-925-3411. And we want you not so much to join our church. It'll be We'll be honored to have you as a member for in-person or virtual. We got somebody just moved to Grand Rapids. We got people that watch and so in our church literally from all over the country. No matter where you are, you can be saved on today. And so if that's you, drop it in the comment section even right now. Let's give God praise, amen, for those that's going to give their lives to Jesus and for those that's going to join the church. We thank God in advance for that even right now. Listen, it's time to bless the Lord uh, today in our giving. Many of you are going to pay your tithes here uh, at the church. Uh, many of you uh, are going to give electronically, and we thank all of those that give through GiveLify. We thank all of those that give through our cash app. Um, I think it's on the screen now, the ways uh, to give. Uh, is on the screen, um, give them a fire. You download uh, that app, you'll find Pilgrim Rest, uh, either main location or Jakeway location, doesn't matter which location you get to, it'll all come uh, to uh, the main uh, accountant and we'll, you'll be uh, noted for your, your tithes and your offer. Or you can give uh, through Cash App, uh, dollar sign Pilgrim Rest 1105, dollar sign Pilgrim Rest 1105 or some of you mail your your tithes and your offering you can continue to do that uh, as well uh, you can mail it to 1105 East Main Street Benton Harbor Michigan 49022 if you mail a check make sure it can go to the bank that same day uh, 11 it was a check we got a while ago and said don't 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 deposit and it had the day just hold the check uh, until it can be deposited, all right? Uh, 1105 East Main Street, Benton Harbor, Michigan, 49022. Everybody is giving today. And I want you to give a special seed uh, today uh, after your tithes and your offer for the word uh, on today. We're going to bless uh, our preacher uh, on today, uh, but I want you, even when you come um, uh, here in, in, in a few moments, uh, if he's still here, wave and Blow the horn, let them know you enjoy uh, the message. He's not going to stay uh, long because they have to get back uh, to Fort Wayne. Make sure that every last one of you are joining me live this uh, coming Wednesday at 6 p.m. And for our Bible study, um, it's just uh, none of these cameras and all that. I'm at another location just virtually just uh, ministering to you one-on-one uh, -on -one. and so I want you to make sure you're doing that as well here's the final announcement uh, today and then we're going to get ready to welcome you deacons I need you all to start making your way here making your way here uh, Charmaine make sure you do a text blast or something to our deacons get them here or 
uh, I had to use the media team to be deacons today as well. They'll be passing out communion too. Uh, amen. But here's the last announcement I want you all. On Monday, October the 11th, our hearts uh, were, were saddened uh, to hear of the passing of uh, Netta Dawkins, uh, a young, and I still got to get her exact age, I, I think between 41 and 43 somewhere in there, but a faithful, faithful member of our church, uh, worked with our youth ministry, um, done a little bit of everything that you can think of uh, in church, and it was just like a, a bomb dropped on our church. It's been a difficult year uh, here at our church, and we have uh, funeralized uh, so many uh, uh, people, not just members of our church, but outside, but anytime um, uh, you have members like Netta Dawkins and, and uh, Chucky Parnell and Deacon uh, Howard and Brother Buchanan and, and um, uh, Sylvia's husband, Butch, uh, it's just been a difficult uh, year. These 18 months have been very uh, trying, and I want us to really pull together next Monday, a week from tomorrow, and we're going to come in person for the homegoing celebration of our sister. And I want us to pull together and really show love to the family. Let's not wait until that day. I want uh, ministries to, to go by and take them dinner. I want us to just go old school all the way and uh, like really minister uh, to them. I want ministries to take a day and uh, let's just go outside the home and just pray for them. You don't even have to go in and touch and, you know, with the pandemic, but just stretch your right hand towards the house and continue to pray for their, her children, and uh, especially our baby, uh, LJ. How old is LJ? I keep, I'm confused. How old is LJ? About 9, 10? He may be 11, uh, but, but continue to pray for for him, you good, baby. Uh, uh, continue to pray for him uh, as well, um, and uh, pray that the Lord will keep him uh, during this time uh, in his life. It's not easy uh, losing a, a mother, and uh, my parents. I was telling Pastor Ruffin earlier, my parents are up in age, and I I worry a lot now. So. So I, I, I don't understand how he feels, but I can imagine. And so I want you all to keep um, them lifted up in prayer. Monday, um, October the 11th, we're here together. Music, uh, band, ushers, everybody is in place. Uh, we'll be masked up, socially distanced, and all of that. And we're going to come and let the Dawkins family know that we love them uh, tremendously, Deacon Dawkins and Carolyn, who's uh, led our music ministry, and and uh, two mom, one of our lead mothers of the church. I'll tell you something that was so critical. Then I'm through. Then we're done. Uh, I called Sister Dawkins, uh, her grandmother, just to check on her, and she said, Pastor, the Lord give it to the Lord, take it away. And uh, she said, Blessed be the name of the Lord. And and she said, Pastor, send somebody over here to pick up my tithes. And I was kind of confused, and, and, and she taught me in that little, that, that little conversation that no matter what happens in life, we got to keep it moving. It's difficult, but we got to keep it moving. It's hard, but we got to keep it moving. So I want you all to drop in the comment section and just really love on the Dawkins family. Let them know that we love them and we're praying for them. Now I want you all to prepare yourselves to come to um, uh, 1105 East Main Street our Main Street location uh, for our uh, drive-through communion and our tithes and offering if you're giving in person, and then you'll pick up your dinner, and then you can go home and eat uh, with your family. Tell somebody, tell them to come on. I'm going to be outside masked. I'm going to be out praying uh, for, for you. Pastor Ruffin, thank you so much uh, for the word on today. Now, God, I pray that you would bless our time together. Thank you for the word that was released to our church. 
making sure that we have a good signal. And we know that's going to come through sound doctrine, sound teaching, rightly dividing the word of truth, cutting it straight. And so, God, I pray for our church now. I pray now, God, that you will bless the crackers that will symbolize your body that was broken, the juice that's there in symbolizing the blood that was shed. Thank you for Calvary. Thank you for dying on the cross. But not only dying, but thank you for getting up on that third appointed morning. God, I pray that you bless the food that's been prepared. Pray that it give us strength to continue to do your will. Now, God, dismiss us from this place, but never from thy presence, because it's your presence that makes the difference in all of our lives. Go with us and stand by us. In the strong, sovereign, secure name of Jesus, we pray and we say thank you. Amen. I'll see you.